Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of A Niger Man's Perspective. Again, in the studio with me is Umar Maman, who has collaborated with me uh, in the past. Um, you should check out the State of the, U State of the Nation uh, video that we did earlier. It's a really, really good video. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the Dangote refinery situation. So if you've been following the news, yeah, you would uh, have read uh, that the Dangote refinery is having problems with the Nigerian government with regards to uh, being licensed, with regards to obtaining crude oil. It's just been a mess for the last uh, one week. If you're new to this channel, please give us a like. Give me a like. Give this channel a like. And also subscribe if you haven't subscribed already uma thanks again for yes. coming on the show what is your You're take <laughs> what is your take on the dangote <laughs> refinery situation can you shed a bit more light on what is actually going on uh, the dangote issue is just um it's uh i don't i don't i don't even understand how this uh we think in this country and our mm. government you see um this uh this dangote refinery is something that you know nigerians have been anticipating for some time now close to eight to eight years you know this man has uh invested we're talking about close to 20 billion dollars um the government have not been able to do what they are supposed to do that is one make sure that the old refineries which they have been allocating billions and billions of dollars for turnaround maintenance for almost 30 years are not working they are in a stage of comatose the at the time um the i think the cardinal refinery was sold to dangote and um the, um, the former president uh Yaradua, late Yaradua, i think people um gave him wrong advice or something and he reported the sale to Dangote and some of his uh people that were interested in making sure that this refinery works and we stop uh, importing petrol and other you know and uh, diesel and kerosene and some other energy sources yes so now he has built this refinery and of course the first thing is our own refineries have not been working wide because there's interest interest from what where from the side of government who are those that are being paid the monies for subsidy till today nobody is telling us so is there no is there no, is there no list is there no list of the people being paid for subsidies is there no yeah, list the same people they are the same people the political elites are the same people that are be, that are paying themselves and that's why they cannot prosecute anybody they cannot prosecute anybody and that's why now you can uh, you can see that the the devil's head is beginning to show you know look at it this man has built this refinery you know something taught me when i listened to one interview with uh the group um executive uh, officer Mele carry of nmpc now nmpc out okay. okay when you know he was being interviewed and he said you know they asked him about this refinery and this uh potaco refinery the cardinal refinery that they are trying to uh, bring on stream and he he made a statement saying that that ref these refineries are not really going to make any more difference in terms of price of pms and other uh commodities are you, that are going to the are you, are, you talking, are you talking about the pump price so no you're saying that there's not going to be yeah, much the difference pump with the pump price so i was like you know i was like wondering why is he saying this because if you are producing here it can be the same like uh when you are it from abroad yeah from abroad because there's transportation costs and other costs that are involved that are associated with uh bringing it from you know the uh from other countries you know so I'm like why is he saying this and now i understand more hmm. if you look at this we are sabotaging ourselves for a few people people that have continued uh, continued destroying this country continued the impoverishing the people of this country is the mm -hmm. major asset that we have even though there are other assets that we have you know other natural resources that we have that they refused to develop why because 
they are already making billions and billions. How do you explain, right? They talk about the dollar, the pressure on dollar is because of the importation. Now, at the beginning, what they now say is that Dangote will pay in dollars. That was now settled. Okay. Dangote and other people that have modular refineries will pay in dollars. Now they came back to, they finished that one. They came back to saying that, um, after saying that uh, he's going to pay in dollars, they now came back, they now said they don't have enough uh, crude. He starts buying from other countries, America, uh, uh, he's, he's trying Brazil. to import from Brazil, some other countries, yeah, African countries, and everything. So, what did Nigerian government or NFPCL have done is that Nigeria we keep borrowing money because NFPC is broke, the country is broke, so we keep borrowing money. And these loans that we are collecting are attached to the production of crude oil. Crude oil. The Yes, so the, production of crude oil. the production of crude oil, right? We're not even meeting up our quota of about two million that we're supposed to be producing on a daily basis. We're producing around 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 most for, 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 since the, the present administration came, came on board. At the time, the last administration, the Buhari administration, they were producing about 1 million barrels per day. Then, mm. they are stealing the oil. You have, if you look at the statistics that just came out recently, complaints from the House of Representatives, almost 437,000 barrels is being stolen on a daily basis. In the past seven months, Nigeria has lost roughly about ten billion dollars. Seven months ago, ten billion dollars. You know, who are the people that are doing all these things? Let's ask ourselves that question. Now, they have interest in that. The military, we have people that are guarding the uh, pipelines. So many people, the army, the navy. You have private. Uh, uh security tantita you have nimasa all sorts of agencies all, all these all these agencies have interests is what you're saying they, they all have interests they all it's they are, it's corruption they are all making money from this the money is too much you know and you you these things can never be done without the hands of the presidency if the president wants this thing to stop to stop so now they are stealing they are stealing uh crude oil they are uh, collecting money from subsidy because the president ignorantly hmm. if, if you don't plan you are planning to fail he does woke up and decided to say subsidy has gone you remove subsidy you did not sit down to look at the implication yeah now they are not able to control it everything has gone out of hand and they are back to paying subsidy they are back to paying subsidy they devalue in error so when you don't go back and you now see the reasons why this dangote issues you relate it to you have to start looking back at their own benefits People in the presidency, people in the military, people in uh, all all those people that are connected to this issue, because it's easy for someone to just give allocations and you make a lot of money. So they are all benefiting from all these things now. Now they they they, they say the crude oil is not enough. This man was building uh, uh, what did they call it a refinery for eight years. Didn't you know that you are going to provide him with crude oil? Huh? For eight years, you you understand? These these are people. That's why you know when they are not thinking about the masses, all they are thinking about is themselves. They never go and sit down, and strategize, and you know plan so that their citizens will benefit 
to the maximum. You understand? So yes, they now they now go back. They now go. They they now they had a stake. The last administration, they tried their best to see that they, you know, they and they helped in whatever they could do. And apparently, they didn't know that. Yeah, I know they, they, they I, I, I don't know. Maybe they were sleeping as they are usually sleeping. They did not <laughs> realize that this thing was going to affect them. You understand? They had a twenty. They were supposed to have twenty stake percent stake in the Dagote refinery, so that you know, at least the government too will not even the government of Nigeria will not even lose out. They borrowed money, you can imagine, still attached to the production of this crude oil, about 1.7 billion that they, they, borrowed money. they gave. They borrowed money to pay for the first installment of payment. And now, because of because they are broke, they cannot pay up the remaining. Gangote has constantly been extending the date of payment, but they are not able to come up with this payment. That's why recently they have come out to make a statement saying that they have uh, gone and reconsidered their investment strategies and uh, with the money that they have initially paid is what they are staking. So from 20%, they have gone back to 7.2%. You understand? Mm. Now, the, uh, meet, the head of Nigeria Meat Stream and Downstream Petroleum Regula uh, Regulatory Authority Right, recently came out to say the quality of diesel produced by Dangote was uh, the proposal content was high and uh, you know of inferior quality. Now mm. they have interest, they are giving allocations, all of them are all connected. This mm. agency, NNPC, DLC, presidency, uh, security forces that are supposed to protect the stolen crude the people that are supposed to make sure that we're not paying excess money for subsidy they are all connected hmm. that was a now you know invited the uh, house of representative leaders and some of the uh, representative uh, members on their way they uh, took samples of uh, they collected some uh, quantities of uh, diesel from different police stations, like mm. two different police uh, stations. You know, they went to Dangote's lab, tested it. They realized that the sulfur content was far, far. We're talking about one thousand parts per million ppm, uh, far, far higher than his own. That was around six hundred and sixty-five ppm, which he explained. That with uh, with time, as 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 we are talking presently, is about sixty something, and by early August, from what Dangote uh, has said, is that it will go to as low as ten ppm. So the the the, the ones the, the diesel that the NMPs PCL because these people they they keep people confusing us from NMPC to NMPP NMPCL, right? They are the same thing. Mm. The ones that they are giving, what do they call it? They, the the people that they are giving to import this diesel is mm. from one thousand to two thousand ppm, mm. far far more inferior than Dangote. And Dangote has even accused them of, you know, not um, you know, having a lab to even test this. If you remember in twenty twenty two. You know, uh, PMS, there was this particular set of bad PMS patrol that was brought into this country. Oh, yes, yes. A lot of people's cars. Go back to, cars. You know, so, you know, apparently, these people don't even, uh, because they said the media should go and let them show the lab that they're doing all these tests. Mm. So, we have gone mm. back to, in this sector that has held us down, what has hmm. stopped Nigeria from building from having at least 10 refineries if our people know what we are doing? What has stopped us? What has stopped people from coming to invest in this sector? What has stopped people? It's because of corruption. And these people, 
are the ones that are benefiting. That is why they don't want Dango Terry's refinery to work. Don't forget that this president has promised Nigerians that he's going to do whatever it takes to see that everything is being sorted out so that Nigerians and um, you know the uh, removal of source of the thinking that okay they're going to make sure that they drew they 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 they, they take all measures to see that everything is being done so that we can be producing locally. Don't forget that if you don't produce locally, there are a lot of byproducts that we are losing out on. Kerosene and yeah, and other byproducts, yeah. Grease. Uh, biochemical uh, fuel for the for the planes and helicopters and yes other countries that don't have oil that are ex importing this oil are banking on and are making monies from we are losing out on these things we are still importing all these things so i have a i have a couple of questions um and thank you very much for that comprehensive answer and breakdown it's clear that you know uh, about these issues happening and some of the background that led to it. So where we are at the moment with, uh, you know, Dangote released a statement to say he's not a monopolist and if uh, an NPC wants it, he'll sell it to them. Where are we in this current situation between Dangote and either the agencies or Dangote and the federal government? Where, well, where, well, where, do, you, where, where do you see this going to? in terms of getting to a logical conclusion so that the Nigerian people don't suffer? Because different amounts have been touted about. People say it's cost $20 billion. Some people say that $20 billion is inflated. Though. It's not up to $20 billion. Whatever the amount is, we can both agree that it's a lot of money. And it's not just a refinery that is there. There's also a petrochemical plant there as well. So that whole area is extremely expensive from the land to the actual equipment to what is meant to deliver and so it's meant to deliver benefit to the nigerian people where are we as of today and in just one or two words what is the solution and then we'll wrap up this episode uh yami uh, quickly uh, the truth is these people because of their interest and the amount of money that's involved in this thing right Mm -hmm. um these guys they're not they're not the interest you know when it comes to interest people don't look at the uh interest of the country that's just mm -hmm. the truth mm -hmm. the refinery is a national asset it's something that nigeria should be proud of it's the biggest single refinery in this it's not something that uh is the biggest single refinery i think they say in the world or is in africa or whatever it is you understand mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. uh, a lot that nigeria has to gain you know, economically, when it comes to Dangote refinery, jobs creation, and all these things. So, hopefully, I want to, you know, believe that with the way things are going and how they have been exposing themselves, you understand. Uh, I want to believe that maybe, maybe God will touch them and, you know, they would try and see that they get a, a resolution because they are being exposed. Most of them, they are being exposed. Uh, yeah. They are um, having meetings, and hopefully, we, in the interest of this country, we want to see that this uh, issue of Dangote refinery is being it's a priority. Finally, uh, I, I want to quickly say something. You know, it's left okay, for the viewers to, to look at this. You know, NNPC, right? They they acquired. Um, there's uh, a company that NMPC is said to have acquired. That mm. company, o, um, that company OVH, right? Okay. Um, it's a, it's a OVH Energy Marketing Limited downstream asset. After paying cash amounts to close to three hundred and twenty-five million, you know, for the acquisition of it's it's dollars? affiliated. Yeah, three hundred and twenty-five million dollars. They are by yeah. about, you know, they are into um, oil and uh, and gas, right? This company, right? People, people are not. A lot of people are not aware of this. This company, you know, 
they have the jet skis in our papa terminal plants they are connected to wando mm. plc mm. yes you understand and recently the comp the nmpc have declared that uh a, a letter dated on the 17th addressing the chief executive officer of the nigerian midstream and downstream uh petroleum regulatory authority that's uh titled notification of inability to complete ovh energy marketing limited terminal plants and depots take over and intend to apply just listen they okay. intend to apply for operating license licenses it intends to apply for operating licenses for fast uh, uh license for facility facilities on that this is nmpco writing you understand to mm. the regulatory agency right but they are writing under ovh energy marketing limited they still are committed to the pay uh to paying the required takeover fees as part of the their commitment to completing the takeover process when the legal measure has been successfully executed the ovh right energy team have already taken over the management of the nmpcl retail headquarters in abuja to uh the, so now oh it, you know it looks like nmpc is acquiring ovh energy are you are you, uh, are you with me i'm following i'm so following i'm following it, it's supposed to be like a merger but it's now ovh energy that is running things now you understand wando that is wando vital and helios what the wando now wando limited right mm. who is the chief executive the group chief executive uh of wando plc his name is adewale his full name is adewale jubil shinubu mm. Mm. adewale shinubu nephew of bola ahmed tunubu the current president of this country so you know it's left for people to now understand why they are frustrating the dangote refinery mm. so just because one second uh, just just one second yeah. just one second uh so viewers i'm just going to make another uh passionate plea to like this video and subscribe if you love this comment if you love this content please put it down below let us know what you what umar has just said and what he has been saying you agree you disagree doesn't matter just put your comments down let's make this a two-way conversation and we also want to hear from what you have to say about this particular topic umar please carry on so um if w w what i've just explained now you know people can check this thing it's on it's online they should check this thing you understand so what i just explained now is that now if you look at it now there's interest from the powers above hmm. and these people are the people that are still importing the diesel importing the kerosene importing the pms and collecting subsidy and not wanting wanting local refineries to work right. the way it looks yes so the way it looks now in a nutshell, so what you're saying in a nutshell if i hear you right is that these indigenous companies right or they're already importing uh refined petroleum products don't want the Dan dangote refinery to work because it clashes with their interests is that what i'm hearing of course of course there's a there's corruption everybody understands that in this sector that is why it has not been working for more than 30 years nobody okay. is, you don't you don't need to be a scientist to understand this you know there are conflicts of interest in so many places so many places and it has to do with government interest people in power people that are 
looting this country dry. People that are killing this country. People okay, that so, you know do want yeah. to see the masses survive. Thank you, thank you so much. I think we're going to call it um, a day here. Thank you for bringing comprehensive analysis and insight to this Dangote. I personally have learned a lot, and viewers, let us know if you've learned a lot as well. I, some of the things you've said today, I have not even seen it anywhere else. So, uh, thank you people so much. People should go and look up. People should go and look at this. Google it. Look at it. They will see their their they will, they will see their controversies as regards the takeover of NMPC. NMPC is supposed to take over, but it's like, it's not NMPC taking over. Did you call the, the company you called? Is it o, o, OVL or OPL? OVL. OVH. OVH. Okay. OVH. Yeah. OVH, okay. that is Wando, uh, Vitor, and Helios. And Helios. Okay. Energy. OVH. Yes. Energy. Yes. O, yes. Energy. And this Thank you. It's uh, part of it's part of Wando PLC. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, yeah. and I will see you in the next one.